let's watch the temperature gauge. Okay. We're coming down. And uh, the crawl will start noticing temperature gauge starting showing us less and less. Let's get a better look. As you can see, it's going down. That's not good. That means we're not getting accurate reading as we should. And yeah, this is our problem. And um, definitely not good. In five simple steps, I'm going to show you what I did, how I diagnosed it and fixed issue with a fluctuating engine coolant temperature gauge on Honda CRV. Yeah, it will be interesting. A little bit of journey. We'll get it fixed. Let's get started. Okay, let's check the coolant level in radiator first. See if we dropped. Nope. It's right to the top where it was when we checked it last time. We don't have any coolant lost from the radiator. That's good. And let's check our expansion coolant tank, reservoir, and, and our coolant level right at the maximum mark. Uh, means we didn't leak out or used any coolant since coolant system was filled up. That's good. All right. To get the air out, we have to open the radiator cap. Be careful if your engine is hot. You might have some coolant escape under the pressure. My engine is still cool. That's fine. I just wrap the rag around the funnel neck to seal the connection of the radiator neck. And uh, yeah, you can see. Warming up, just maintain the level in your expansion reservoir, top it up to the maximum mark, and now we're going to turn our heater on all the way, crank it, yeah, like that. Let coolant circulate it through the heater core, it will help us to purge the air faster. Heater core is open. And uh, yeah, the engine is warming up. My thermostat is open. I could feel it. This upper radiator hose is hot, and lower radiator hose is slightly cooler. And it just starts squeezing, as you can see. The air bubbles are coming out. What I'm doing, I'm just squeezing the lower radiator hose right now. Get the air out. See the bubbles. We have quite a bit of air. Upper. Yeah. We have to watch the coolant level. As soon as the air will get out, we have to top it up the coolant to the required level. Yeah. Oh, and the, get all air out. Now my heater core is open all the way. I could feel it. Hot coolant is coming in, and yeah, colder, a little bit cooler coolant is coming out back. Our lower fan is working. Yeah, let's get a rid of the air. We have quite a bit. You could feel it. Lower fan is pushing hot air inside the cabin. Means our heater core is working. That's good. Yeah, air is hot. Nice. We're still pretty cold. Let's read our temperature the thermostat housing. We're only 82. 167 Fahrenheit. Yeah, pretty cold. Here's our upper radiator hose. So lower, it's cooler. 65. Yeah. It's still pretty cold. We have to wait for engine fully warm up when cooling fans will kick in, and uh, yeah, that should be pretty much it. Still some air. Oh yeah. Let's take a 
brief look on the wiring diagram. This is for on the CRV service repair manual and our radiator fan switch should turn on when temperature reaches 199 degrees Fahrenheit or 93 degrees Celsius. Yeah, very simple wiring diagram. Let's go and check our temperature and it's snowing outside. Yeah, as you can see, snow is falling on the ground. Let's measure our temperature and we're at only 180. Yep, we're slowly warming up. Yeah, as you can see, our fan is not on yet. We have to wait till fans are well kicked in. We need to fully warm up. Our fans kicked in. Good. I'm keeping engine RPM up to 2500, helping engine to warm up a little bit faster and the water pump will create more pressure in the system and better flow. Yeah, there we go. Fans are kicked in. Yeah, you're spinning. Let's check our temperature. And yeah. yeah, we're still pretty cool. We're turning off. Yeah, right away we drop it down to 85, 82. Yeah, finally we got rid of the old air. It's hot. Let's put our radiator cap back. Okay, we have a next test, gauge testing. Check the number 25, 7.5 fuse under the dash. Let's use relay box before starting. Let's do that, but I know my fuse is good, but let's go and find that fuse and uh, see if fuse is not blown, just in case if you need it. Number 25, 7.5 amps. This number 25 out and see what we have. I think fuse should be just fine. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, just in case we checked. Yeah. 25, so I'll put it back. Nice, okay. Uh, make sure the ignition off, ignition is off. Then disconnect yellow green wire from the coolant temp sensor unit and ground it with the jumper wire as it's shown. That's pretty cool test, pretty easy. Yellow green wire, just to ground it and it's a few steps. We have to connect this ground wire, turn the ignition on. Second position, check the pointer of the coolant temperature gauge starts moving toward the high mark. Turn the ignition off before the pointer reaches high. The gauge dial, failure to do so, might damage the gauge. If pointer or the yellow or the gauge doesn't move at all check the yellow green wire or open this is our as you can see it here yellow yellow green yep this is our bad boy or open if wires are okay replace the coolant temperature gauge if the coolant temperature gauge works test the temperature okay my jumper wire is connected I have an alligator clip on this end and I have extension which I am going to use. Let's go inside the vehicle, turn our ignition to the second position and touch the ground with the wire. My wire hanging. Let's turn key to the second position, which we are told one and two. And the dash lights are on, turn the blower off. And yeah. Let's touch the ground and watch that. Temperature gauge go up. It's now to the side. Okay. My wire is long enough. Can touch him. Oh. You can see, yeah. Now I'm grounding yellow and green wire. We see the engine temperature gauge is responding from cold. Wire is not grounded. I'm touching the ground. And gauge is moving. See, when engine is warming up. That wire slowly grounds 
and we see a high temperature going up. Yeah. Well, so far gauge is working. All right, let's test our coolant temperature sending unit, and um, as you can see, that's our coolant temperature sensor. This guy, as you can see, I have this wire unplugged already. And our resistance should be when engine is cold 137 ohms and when engine is 185 212 degrees Fahrenheit should be a lower resistance 4630. All right, yeah, let's do that. We're fully warmed up 300 degrees Fahrenheit and we're reading. Only 9, 10 ohms, way out of required values, and next step I'm going to replace that engine temperature sensor, aka switch, and uh, we'll go from there, we're going to replace that sensor. Okay, first uh, let's unplug our connector and this video is only demonstration i'm going to do the quick replacement yeah normally you have to drain the coolant but i'm not going to do that okay yeah my coolant system is full and uh, it will lose a little bit coolant not big of a deal and uh, i'm going to put in catching pan underneath yeah, it will spill a little bit and we will catch the coolant. Alright, let's uh, put a Teflon tape. Make sure our new sensor won't leak. Yeah, simply that. And uh, going to use a half inch socket for the new sensor. But our old sensor is 12 mil. Yeah, let's uh, remove the old sensor. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. Critics, comments, suggestions. Yeah. Okay. I got my engine coolant temperature sensor loose. Just put in a paper towel underneath. Just prevent from leaking all right sensor is out and uh, yeah now I'm putting a new one yeah a little bit of coolant came out yeah I'm stirring the sensor by hand a few threads and then let's tie it up with a wrench yeah over time those uh, thermistors they'll go bad and they're worn out yeah okay I wipe the coolant what was spilled let's connect our electrical connector as the yellow and green wire is going to the instrument cluster temperature gauge okay all clean very little coolant we lost yeah well <laughs> pretty much nothing yeah we did it fast and uh plug that hole with a paper towel make sure it won't spill much Okay, yeah, now we have to purge the whatever air can get into the cooling system. I will put a video down in the description how to purge the air from the engine cooling system. It's pretty easy. Check it out. Okay, yeah, we'll look for leaks. Make sure we don't have any and uh, get out of that air. Make sure our system is purged properly. Otherwise, you might have the incorrect readings and uh, yeah something like that pretty simple pretty easy yeah temperature <laughs> sensor is functioning properly gauge is working yeah thank you so much guys for your time watching this video if you like it if it's helpful thumbs up and uh, yeah keep your old reliable Honda CRV on the road and this vehicle won't ever let you down Take care of your old Honda and they will go forever. See you soon. Bye-bye.